What's going on, Bully fam? What's going on, dog breeding fam? Today, I wanna to cover progesterone testing and, and a quick tutorial on how to use the Hoke IF1 machine, right? On um, progesterone machine testing, it's the most accurate way to time when a dog is ready to be bred. So that's why it's extremely important for a breeder to be able to do these tests. I'm gonna show you guys uh, how to use these machines at home, especially since, uh, you know, we sell these on breedershacks.com. Um, we sell them to vets, we sell them to breeders, we sell them to, you know, people who just do it as a service, whatever the case may be. I just wanna show you a quick step-by-step -step tutorial on how we do it so you can get the most accurate results. What's going on, boy fam? We're gonna go ahead and just get right into it, right? So the Hoke I have one machine, right? So when you open up your machine, you're gonna go ahead and plug it in, charge it for a little bit. And the great thing about this thing is it's actually portable. So you could disconnect the charger after it's charged and take it on the go or whatever the case may be. But for this demonstration, we're just gonna leave it here plugged in, right? So the things that you need is you need your machine, you need a box of tests, you're gonna need your quality control card and all the paperwork that comes with your machine. You're going to need a pipette, you're gonna need your blood sample, and then you'll need your vortex mixer and your centrifuge. Typically all this stuff comes with your bundle when you buy a machine, say from us, like from breedershacks.com. Um, but those are all the things you need in order to be able to start running your test, right? The first thing that we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and actually turn on the machine. So all you do, and I'm gonna turn it off so I can show you guys and, and turn it right back on. So all you're gonna do is hold the button right in the back, right? There's a button right in the back of the machine. Press it down, hold it down. And as you can see, the machine is off right now, it's turning right back on, right? There you go, it says welcome. It's gonna take a moment or two, just like a computer to boot back up, to turn, turn on, right? So in the meantime, what you can do is get everything else ready, right? So as the machine is turning on, you wanna open up your box of test strips. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is for one test, you'll take out a buffer solution, you'll take out one test strip, and you'll take out a serum split tube. You may need two of them, and you'll see why in a minute, right? So you'll need these two tubes. And then you'll wanna take out like two pipette tips, right? So you wanna have these things ready to start running your test. Right, so what you can do is I'll take one of the pipette tips and just have it ready on our pipe batter. Our machine is powered up, right? So what you're gonna wanna do is put in your passcode. So for me, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Every machine has its own unique password or whatever. Once you sign in, this is the screen that it's gonna take you to. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to system, right? Click on system and go to self-checking. Before we even start running this machine and doing any tests, we wanna make sure the machine is running accurately, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our quality control card. I wanna make sure you guys do not lose this thing. That's why I said you're gonna keep it with your paperwork for your machine. Because every time I start this machine to use it, I, I use the quality control, right? And all it is, is is a quality control to make sure the machine is running accurately. So we got the machine tilted so you guys can see it a little better, but let me get this in here like this, boom. So we put our quality control test right in the machine. And then now all we have to do is hit system, go to self-checking and hit start. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the machine to do a test run and make sure that everything is running accurately. If there's anything that's abnormal or says anything different than normal, then we know that we have an issue with the machine and you can reach out to you know your distributor or, or whoever you got the machine from and tell them, hey, maybe there's an issue. So once we did that, we can go ahead now and pull out our QC. We take this out, we don't lose this, and we go ahead and put this away. Put this right back in our paperwork with, with our paperwork. So now that that's done, we can go back to our home screen, hit test, and it takes us right to where we can run our test now. So now that we did the quality control, this is the next thing that we're gonna wanna do. We're gonna take our serum split tubes here, right? And the reason why you wanna use this is because it makes testing a million times easier. I'm gonna do an episode talking about it. Why? Because it doesn't allow your samples to clot. But basically, we have our blood here, right? So we take one of our tubes, take the top off, and we take our blood. We got plenty of videos showing how to draw blood. I'll do some more videos as well, but if you search our channel, we got plenty of videos on how to draw blood on dogs because that's the most accurate way to get the results for progesterone is through blood. So we're gonna take the needle tip off, right? Just like this. And now we're gonna go ahead and ever so slowly push the blood into our sample, just like this, All right? Ever so slowly. So once that's done and the blood is in our test tube. There's one thing you need to do before we put it in our centrifuge. 
And the thing is, is that we need to match it with equal amount of fluid on the opposite side. So what we'll do is I have my little bit of water right here. And all I'm going to do is put in the exact same amount of water on the other side, as you can see, right? Got the same amount of water on the opposite side now. So what we'll do is after we made sure that we have two tubes that are equally balanced, that have the same amount of fluid in each one, in each side, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab our centrifuge and you wanna put it on the opposite side. So if I have one in the front, I'm going to do it directly opposite on the opposite side so that the weight is balanced. Because once this thing starts spinning, it's gonna spin so fast, it can break the machine if you don't have it properly balanced, the amount of weight. So that's what we're doing right now. So we're gonna go ahead and now set the timer for about 10 minutes. So while you have the blood sitting for about 10 minutes, we need to allow it time to clot and coagulate and so on and so forth. So we let it sit in the serum split tubes for 10 minutes in our machine before we even start spinning. Right now, this is just a timer. It's not even spinning yet. So in the meantime, you can make sure you have everything else ready. Make sure you have your test kit ready, you know, your test strip here. Make sure you have your buffer solution ready and make sure you put your first pipette tip on and have your pipette ready. So now, after about the 10 minutes, we could go ahead and move on to the very next thing that we're gonna do. All right, guys, so our timer is about to go off. So it's been just about 10 minutes. So we let the blood sit. You wanna do that every single time. So once it hits the 10 minute mark, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spin it really for like five minutes. So now that the timer went off, right, and it's beeping, we can go ahead now, and it doesn't matter what centrifuge you use, whether you're using a digital or not, you can go ahead and set it for five minutes and we'll go ahead and spin it. And I like to spin it honestly at, at its fastest that it can go. So I like to spin the machine as fast as it'll go. And I do that just for about five minutes. Blood is very uh, hardy. So you don't really have to worry about damaging the red blood cells or anything like that. So while that is spinning for our five minutes, we really want to get one more thing set up with the machine, right? Anytime you're using a new box of test kits, what you want to do is make sure that you have your ID chip. People ask me all the time, how do I calibrate the machine? Does the machine need some kind of calibration? No, this is the calibration. And literally all you have to do is put this inside your machine, right where it says ID chip, slide it in just like that and hit read ID chip. Now it says read ID chip successfully for progesterone. So now it's ready to test the machine for progesterone because what's so great about this machine in comparison to a lot of the other machines out there, you don't have to just test for progesterone to see when the dog is ready to be bred. You can also test for pregnancy to see if the dog's pregnant or not. So anyway, we put our ID chip in, we hit read ID chip and it says it's successful. So now the machine is calibrated to this box of test strips. When you have your test strips, don't remove the ID chip from your box because each ID chip is different usually to every box. So you don't want to lose it because then if you use, say I use a test strip from this box or a test strip from this box with this ID chip, because say I lose the ID chip or I misplace it or I throw it all together in one bin, now the machine isn't going to work. It's not going to work with this ID chip for these test strips. So that's just something to keep super in mind. Keep your uh, everything that comes with your test inside its box, including the ID chip. So once you hit read ID chip, it's pretty much ready to go. So now, other than that, like we said, you'll have everything else ready to go. So we're just gonna wait you know, a couple more minutes. And then once that timer is up and it's been spinning for approximately about five minutes, we're ready to basically get our test on the way. All right, so we're just gonna hang tight and uh, we got like maybe two more minutes before we can actually start the test. All right, All right guys, so our machine has been spinning and as you can see, oof, Whoa, look how fast that is. I don't know if you guys can see. But anyway, uh, we got about like a couple of seconds. So it's gonna shut off and stop on its own, right? So once our timer is up and our machine is done spinning for about the five minutes, this is exactly what you want, guys. You want the serum up top that you can see that's a uh, liquid. Then we have our gel in between and we have our red blood cells at the bottom. We're gonna be testing with the serum up top, right? So I'm gonna put this back for two seconds. I'm gonna explain why. When you're dealing with your pipette now, because we need to take the serum out in order to be able to put it with our buffer and run the test. When you're dealing with a, a medical pipette, people get this 99% of the time wrong. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it properly so you don't have any issues. So people don't realize 
that if you pipe that wrong, it will give you completely inaccurate numbers. It'll give you completely inaccurate readings when it comes to your test. So you need to get this right. This is probably the number one thing that people get wrong when it comes to running a progesterone test. So here we go. I'm going to show you, right? So because this is an adjustable pipette, what you're going to do is you're going to twist it, right? So we're going to go all the way, twist it to the number 50, right? Because we're going to take out 50 ULs of serum. See? So now that we're at the number 50, we're ready to go ahead and extract 50 ULs from the sample. But there's one other thing. When you press down on the stop, what a lot of people do is they'll press all the way down and lift all the way up. That is completely wrong. And you will not get accurate results and your test results will probably be wrong. So this is what you need to do. I'm gonna show you guys, right? So if you have a pipette, do it with me, right? So this blue button behind here, this is just to eject it. This is just to eject the pipette tip, see? it ejects it. So we're gonna put our pipe bet tip right back on. So don't do this. You're not gonna press all the way down. What you're gonna do is you're gonna press down to the first stop. That's how much you're gonna take out. So I'm gonna use my buffer as a, an example, right? So I'm gonna open up this tube and now we wanna extract 50 ULs. So what we do is, I'll take my pipe bet, put it in this hand so you guys can see better. Press down to the first stop, then go in and take that out. Do you see how much solution is in here now? Now, imagine if we would have did it the incorrect way. If we would have did it the incorrect way, it would have been where we pressed all the way down and lift all the way up. That's about 25% more fluid. And believe it or not, that would give us a completely inaccurate reading. So I just can't, I can't stress that enough because that's the number one thing that a lot of people get incorrectly. So anyway, if we want to push out now all the fluid that's in here, say we have our serum that's in here and we want to put it in here. Now you can press it all the way down because we're done. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take our sample right back out. Here's our serum tube. And now we pop the top off and we're going to go ahead and take 50 ULs. So I'm going to go ahead and Get the bubbles off first, push down to the first stop right there. The first set of resistance, not all the way down, but for the first stop. Now put my pipette tip in, go right it a little bit, you know, like maybe uh, half an inch in suction up, remove the pipette tip. Now that we lift it up, it's going to keep the fluid in the tip of the pipette. We don't have to keep it pressed down or anything like that. So I'm going to put the top back on our serum tube. And for right now, I'll just put this back in the centrifuge. So now that we have our 50 ULs, we're going to go ahead and take our buffer tube, our buffer solution. We can, we can bring the sample in, try not to create any bubbles. I'll put it right on the, the edge of it and now press and push. Now you can empty it out and empty out the entire thing into the buffer solution, right? Just try not to make too many bubbles. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead to our vortex mixer and all you gotta do is press down and it evenly mixes the serum and the buffer solution. Do that for about a couple seconds, like three seconds, something like that. So the next thing that I'll do is we have our pipette tips here. I'm going to eject with the eject button on our pipetter, eject the old pipette tip, put a new pipette tip on, and now the next thing we need to do is instead of 50 ULs, we need 100 ULs of the solution that we just created with the serum and the buffer. So we go twist it all the way to the number 100, and here we are, we're at 100. So now we take the top off and do the same exact thing we did with the serum. Press down to the first stop, instead of all the way. So press down, first stop, go in, go like a half an inch in, go ahead and suck out the fluid. There we go. We can put our cap back on. We can discard the buffer. And now we have our test strip, right? We'll take our test strip, open this up. And now this is what it looks like. It looks like a woman's pregnancy test, right? So we always want to put the fluid here in this little um, spot right here where it has an S. Usually there's a T and a C at the bottom. This longer window is where the machine is going to read the results. So we want to always make sure that we put the liquid, we put the fluid in the smaller window, right? All the way here at the top. So now we're going to slowly, as hopefully you guys can see, slowly release the fluid, as you guys can see, top of this window. 
press all the way down just trying to not get too many bubbles and as you can see already the fluid is traveling down the window down on the test strip right so i like to hold it at a slant for a moment or two just to make sure it goes all the way down and once it's gone all the way down you can go ahead now and take your test strip and put it in your machine all right just like this once it's in we can go ahead now and just make sure that you had hit your read id chip make sure it's calibrated what you could also do and you could have done this before but you could put the dog's name in you could put the species you could put the sample type there's more detailed information all this stuff here if you want you know if you're a, a vet clinic that's doing it as a as a service or if you're a breeder what i typically do is i just name the dogs i just put the dog's name here so for example i'm going to put mercy pg because it's a pg test and now um, we put our dog's name in here. And like I said, you have detailed information. You could put a, a whole bunch of stuff, phone number, the owner's address, all that stuff like that, right? But for this is since this is our own dog. We did a PG and it's Mercy. And now all we do, make sure it's clicked on standard test. You never wanna run a quick test. It's always going to be a standard test. You hit start test. It's gonna ask, please select the sample type. It's serum and voila. It has a timer of about 10 minutes. So we have to let the machine run for 10 minutes. And at the end of the 10 minutes, it's going to give us our results. The great thing about these test kits is it comes with a chart in every box of test kits telling you like when it's time to breed the dog and things like that. So you can go ahead and check that out. And yeah, basically you just wait your 10 minutes and it's gonna give you your test results and I'm letting you know when it's time um, to breed the dog or whatever the case it may be. So our timer is almost up. It's a, just about to ring, right? So it's been 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes starts, as you can see, it's already going to start running the test. So it's giving us a percentage as to, um, you know, how long it's going to take and it's done. So this particular dog, as you can see, is a 1.05. So she's not quite ready to be bred yet. Each box of tests comes with their own chart. Um, essentially, I'm going to do an episode going more into detail as far as how to, you know, interpret results because you're really looking for the numbers to climb. You're looking for them to jump. But essentially on this machine, you can start breeding, I believe, around like a 10. So her being at a one, she's just not ready yet. That's really it. So now what we could do is we can go to our history, right? And we can see that this was, the, this was the PG right here. So, you know, we can go ahead and review. We can go back and look. You can search by the date, right? We can search by date. We can search by the, the, the animal's name. So that's why I always put the name, um, so on and so forth. So what we can also do is even just hit print. And now we have a printout to say give if we're giving it to another owner or whatever the case may be. We have a nice little fancy print out here. The thing is, I don't really print them anymore. What I typically do is um, what's really cool and it comes with your paperwork with your machine is there's actually software that you can use that's like very similar to what the veterinary offices have and things like that where you can go ahead and you can actually store all your reports, all your information here on one centralized um, reproductive software. So the Hoke um, K9 and reproductive software. It's great because then I just keep everything stored on my phone. So I don't even have to print these anymore and I can look and I can send PDFs and so on and so forth. So I'll probably do an episode going more in detail on it. But this machine is great. This is, I mean, everybody's been asking us to do a video on the machine that we currently use now. I mean, I absolutely love it. I'm so effective. I'm so efficient now. I have all the results right there on my phone. I wanted to go ahead and give you guys this quick tutorial. If you want to see more videos, because like I said, we're, we have so many more on the way. We're going to be talking about how to interpret the results. We're going to be talking about, you know, different aspects of the machine, so on and so forth. But I wanted to just give you guys a quick hands-on tutorial. So if you made it to the end, uh, congratulations. And I hope you have plenty of successful litters just like we've been having. All right, guys. So um, I hope this information is helpful. I hope it's useful. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks. All right, guys.